Hello everyone and welcome back. Got an interesting one for you today. Nice patient came in. She has had this gold crown for quite some time. You can see the apical infection there. When I went through the comb beam, I got a little disheartened because I hate telling nice people that they have to lose their teeth. Actually, I hate telling anybody they gotta lose their teeth. And as you can see, there's that nasty J-shaped radiolucency along the distal. And as we go up right there, you can see kind of where I suspect there'd be a crack. I'll zoom in and kind of put a still frame right there is what I was concerned about. However, when I went to look at the tooth clinically, you can see the sinus tract is actually in the gingiva and the probing is completely normal. Going back, watch, and there is actually a thin collar of bone right there that actually holds it in place. So this tooth is not cracked, so we're going to go ahead and save it. I'll show you, uh, did zoom in pretty closely at the end. I do apologize here. Uh, somehow, my, for some reason, my settings were showing up uh, for the first uh, two minutes and I was able to get it off, changed after, but uh, going ahead and pop through. The gold was very easy to drill through and just use the workers to kind of drop down into the actual pulp chamber itself. Um, I think, yeah, right after this is where those numbers go away. But in case you're wondering what my settings are for the video, there you go. <laughs> so once we're inside there, go ahead and use the 8C file like normal to gain patency. Just get down to the bottom, get that glide path in there. Start off with the 2006. It felt like a single distal. You'll see in a few minutes. It actually kind of is like a big kind of they all coalesce into one so um, I got the main one and then eventually went back and cleaned out the others but it was just one solid canal rinse with triton get all that nastiness out of here and this is a case where I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to finish it in a single visit or if it was going to require multiple and thankfully it was pretty straightforward able to get everything nice and dry and I have found that with these long-standing infections once there's a sinus tract there's usually continual drainage if the patient isn't in pain and then it's very easy to get everything dry inside the tooth which makes it predictable as far as obturating the case and not being worried about failures. So like I was saying, lots of rinsing. Here there was, it was a little bit calcified. So I started with the 2006 and then took a 17 down to within a few millimeters of the working length that I got off the comb beam. You can see when I'm doing the suction, we're not getting a ton of drainage. Most of that white is actually bubbles from the Triton from the activation of the bleach inside there. So not really any pus to worry about. Working length is normal. Um, it took a little bit longer because you know how fun it is to get working length of gold. <laughs> uh, so I just skipped over that. And I decided just to shape this to a 1704. I was already concerned about fracturing it. No need to really remove any excess tooth structure here especially on those mesials. They are nice and skinny and curvy, and you'll see the final here in a little bit. Um, getting down to my working length took a little extra time there. Like I said, little calcification, but all in all, not too bad. And we were able to keep things nice and tiny as far as our access, very small and minimally invasive, which is what we strive to do with all of our cases here. Going through the final rinse process, and I, just, I kept this one in here to show you, it, there's really no drainage. Even the bubbles have stopped at this point. So those two factors right there make me feel very comfortable that even though there is apical findings here, I can finish this in one visit and not be concerned about it. I have been loving using these yellow tipped endo activators, especially with these smaller 1704 sizes. The red ones are just a little too large. They, they don't really work that well in these small shapes. And so rinsing it out here with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, just to get everything nice and dry and drying everything. And once again, you can see nothing coming up with that microsuction. So that is a really good sign that we'll be able to get things taken care of. And that's what I wanted to show you. No vertical fracture all along the distal. However, I did see that there was a tiny little like almost fin that I wanted to clean out so I went back in with the 2006 here I found that this is a case where sometimes using a slightly larger, more aggressive taper is superior to using something like a 1704 because the goal is to kind of make everything coalesce into one. And you'll see in the final, that's kind of what the distal looks like. Drying with paper points, you've all seen that before. And then we're going to do the squirt technique here. When you're squirting a case like this that has a larger apical finding, the key is to not use as much pressure and to hold off on the pack mech until you take your working length film. So I'm still going to go down like we do normally but with the beta when I'm back filling it we really don't want to do too much aggressive pressure I did I skip over all that because you guys have seen that multiple times once again I'll, I'm working on getting a video together on the squirt technique but I think I'm going to use some clear blocks so you can actually see how it works going in now with the pack mac there were a couple of voids in there and I just wanted to help that distal like I said coalesce into one solid unit so going with that and at this point we're going to seal it up with amalgam it looks great and uh, my amalgam skills, uh, once again, I have lots of friends who are in the military, so don't don't uh, come after me. <laughs> um, this is really the only time, I, most of the dentists that I work with in this area prefer composite because it's easier to prep. Uh, patients seem to be more 
prone to accepting it because of the mercury the stuff. Um, I do like using this acorn burnisher. I didn't want to say that as far as the amalgam, but for metal, I do find that that is the best material. Amalgam is the best material for that. So I bought a, I think a thousand of these things, a thousand little, you know, cartridges a while ago, and it'll probably last me my whole career. <laughs> uh, finishing off with a cotton pellet, just to make sure we don't have any excess there. Um, that's what the final looks like, as you can see, really nice and skinny as far as the end result, and that's what my uh, okay amalgam looks like. We'll, we'll give that a B. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for watching. Wanted to put this one together because it just goes to show you really need to combine the radiographic findings with the clinical here. I had already told the team, get the consult kit out. We're going to you know, call in the next one. This is a vertical root fracture. And I was very pleased that I was wrong in that diagnosis and was able to save this very nice patient's tooth. So if you have any questions, please drop them below. And as always, I will talk to you next time.